As the world marks this year's World Malaria Day today, the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, has urged Nigerians to avoid self-medicating at this time. The country is battling community transmission of COVID-19 as malaria shares similar symptoms with the disease. The medical doctors also urge Nigerians to use the period of the lockdown occasioned by the ravaging COVID-19 infection to clear drains and bushes around their homes as part of precautionary measures to protect themselves from mosquitoes' bites. Joining us live via Skype is Dr. Damian Umaniri, an associate professor and consultant, pediatrician, University of Benin, University of Benin Teaching Hospital, Benin City, Nigeria. Thank you, Dr. Damian, for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning. Um, How are you doing this morning? For having you, for having me. The title for this year's theme is Zero Malaria Stats with Me. Such an apt theme, I must say. So speak to us why this is necessary. Uh, it's very important uh, that this year's um, theme for World Malaria Day is uh, Zero Malaria Starts With Me. Um, and the call is all the organizations um, and the partners uh, have talked about um, the gains that have not so far um, in malaria control. But it should be also noted that uh, these gains um, usually are reduced or lost during um, pandemic or epidemic diseases, just like what we have currently um, ongoing with COVID-19. Between the years 2000 and 2014, the number of malaria-related deaths fell by 40% worldwide. However, the progress has grown to a standstill in recent years. Uh, and according to the World Malaria Report 2019, um, the number of deaths has actually doubled just within a period of um, one year. And I can also tell you that um, within the period where we are now, especially in the era of this COVID-19 pandemic, um, all attention has been shifted to the disease. And so every other aspect um, of malaria control, um, such as case management, environmental sanitation, and some few other aspects had actually been reduced. You also know that there have been some few issues about people having access to quality health care in this era. Uh, since uh, some people are actually even afraid of uh, visiting the hospital even when they have some symptoms for fear of stigmatization. So, and that's the reason why for this year, World Malaria Day 2020, the team is Zero Malaria Starts With Me. Dr. Damien, your association is also urging Nigerians to stop self-medicating, especially now when we're battling COVID-19. Could you share why self-medication is, in itself, pretty dangerous? Well, it is very important. We know that malaria um, is a disease is caused by the parasite, Plasmodium, with these different species. The most difficult or important one being the Plasmodium falciparum that causes the most malignant disease. Um, it's a preventable disease, uh, and, um, and when it's identified early with prompt treatment, um, cure is obtained. However, it's also a disease that has two prongs or, or two aspects, which is what we call the uncomplicated malaria with its major symptoms being fever and any other non-specific symptoms such as malaria, um, general body weakness, atrasia, and so on and so forth. And it is stated that when the disease at that stage, um, home-based management can be instituted. But however, this home-based management is not just going across uh, the counter to buy a drug. It's actually by trained healthcare providers at the community level, whether at the primary healthcare center or what we call the village um, um, volunteer healthcare providers. With the, uh, with the, with the simple drug, the artemisinin based combination therapy. Now, because these drugs can be obtained over the counter, that is why people can self-medicate. That is the one, because that is the, the current drug that has been recommended by the World Health Organization and then the National Primary Health Agency, by the National Primary Health Agency and National Malaria Elimination Program for treatment of malaria. In the past, we have also noted that um, the, the chloroquine, uh, which is what is ongoing now, has been a good drug for treatment of malaria. But we are moving, we, we have already moved out of that era since 2007 till date, you know, out of chloroquine because of the resistance that have been um, noted against malaria. And everybody's mind has been shifted to the use of the artemisinin based combination therapy for treatment of malaria. However, based on what is going on about the COVID-19, many people are now going back to the so-called 
screen because there have been some fillers in some arbitrary um, effect uh, in, in public COVID-19, even though um, um, researches are ongoing as regards to that. But because people can walk across the counter to buy these drugs, it becomes a two-edged or hydra-headed effect, either for treatment of malaria or for the so-called COVID-19, just by drawing us back on effort that we have done so far in public enlightenment program that there is marked resistance you know, in the use of chloroquine for treatment of malaria. That has been our major concern, even in this era of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And that is fear that people may still go back to the use of chloroquine for treatment of malaria, which have been abandoned uh, almost in the last um, decade. Ma malaria is one of the illnesses we almost don't worry about, so to speak, whereas in other climes, they take it rather seriously. Could you give us simple tips on how to avoid malaria? Oh, the most important, like I said earlier on, malaria is a preventable disease, but um, has high mortality. It stated that even in Nigeria, that every um, two to four minutes, a child dies from malaria elsewhere. Um, we have been doing very well, uh, I must say, in, in controlling malaria, and Nigeria is currently moving towards the elimination phase. And that is because there's a multi-pronged approach um, in, in, in control of malaria, which uh, have been instituted. And I must say that the National Malaria Elimination Program in Nigeria is quite apt in, in management of control of malaria at all levels, starting from federal Ministry of Health or federal level through to the state level and the local government level. Um, I may not more want to go into that detail, but there's a synergy between the local government up to the federal level in terms of um, activities, in terms of data collection, in terms of control. Now, coming to the question you asked, is a multi-pronged approach that is needed in controlling malaria. And that has to do with the environment, because the vector, the anopheles, female anopheles mosquito, uh, breeds within our environment. It breeds in stagnant water. And so it's, a, it's our effort to ensure that the environment is clean, um, ensure that the, the gutters are flowing, uh, clean them and ensure that there's a free flow of, of water in, 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 in our gutters and avoid stagnation of waters in the community. We can ensure that we cut the grasses because there are some plants or grasses that enhance the breed of mosquitoes. Those grounds like elephant grasses where water collects and mosquitoes can actually breed in them. And then we now also talk about um, good and adequate refuse uh, disposal. Hand wash practices still remains an important aspect of controlling infectious diseases, not just about COVID-19, Ebola, or Lassa fever. And then the other aspect is on the, 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 the barriers between humans and mosquitoes, especially in the use of the long-lasting insecticide-treated net, as well as putting on screens on our doors and our windows. I must say that we have done several research work to show that every aspect of these um, control measures play their role as against single method approach. For example, if I have a long glass insecticide treated net and I use them, but my environment is dirty, I have stagnant waters and so on and so forth, the, the efficacy of the, the net may not be as much as noted in, in, in environments where they use the long glass insecticide treated net, they clear the bushes around them, they make sure that the waters or stagnant waters are covered, they make sure that the gutters are flowing properly and clean, they make sure that they have screens on their doors and their windows. That multi-pronged approach actually helps us to control the vector of mosquitoes, which carries malaria parasites, thereby reducing the morbidity of the disease and, of course, the attendant mortality that we have occurred, which is more common in children. I suppose to say that as we are planning and doing well in malaria control, there's a slight paradigm shift from even the disease moving on to older children and even adults having the severe form of the disease. So now is the time for everyone to put our hands on deck to ensure that we eradicate the breeding sites of mosquitoes, which is the vector that carries malaria parasite. And I know that if that is done, we will actually go into us um, zero malaria. But like the team says, it starts with me. It starts with each and every one of us. Every individual, have the, we have our role to play. And then we also know that the government have their roles to play. But I also always tell people, the government will not come to your own doorstep to clean your gutter or to, or to sweep your environment or to ensure or, or to make you wash your hands. What the government will do is to give you the information, but the actual activity still lies on each and every one of us so that we can support the government to ensure that our environment is clean to eradicate the breeding sites of mosquitoes. Dr. Deman Wanneri, Zillo Maria starts with me, and thank you for joining us on News on the Hour.
Thank you very much.